I keep a list uh, or printouts of denial letters that I've received. These for from companies like I've talked about on a video here from Adobe Creative Residency, like the Adobe program that that pays creators to go out and create for a year. They don't have to worry about their expenses, uh, software to be able to ex execute. Um, it just really comes down to do you align with what it is that they want to see that's created out there all the way to creating and depicting videos and exemplars of videos depicting behavioral, positive behavioral supports. Um, but one in particular that I wanna talk about today is from the Association of Behavior Analysis. They have a Society for the Advancement of Behavior Analysis, SABA. There's a SABA development or SABA International Development Grants, dissemination grants, things like that. And it, it told a, a good s story for me in hindsight, or I guess it became a good story in hindsight. And so with this, Saba is part of this large uh, fund that helps get behavior analysis, behavior analytic thinking services, um, educational opportunities set up in, in this case, international locations. Now I applied for this to try to create an online community to help disseminate behavior analysis um, for four years in a row. And this was the same email that I'd get every time. Dear Ryan, on behalf of the board of the Society for Advancement of Behavior Analysis, Saba, I would like to thank you for making an application for a 2016 international development grant. Yours is one of a large pool of applications and the proposals were considered as a whole to be exemplary. Your efforts are to be commended. However, the board selected other applicants at the end of this year's, uh, as this year's recipients. Again, many thanks from on behalf of the Saba board. Um, and this was dated May 26, 2016. And for me, you can get one of those things and be like, ah, oh, I don't necessarily feel you know supported by my behavioral community. I have a good idea, and it's very easy to get down. But there's two things here. I think the first lesson for me was I was not shaping and crafting my pitch clearly and articulately enough to, for people to understand what I was trying to do. That's, that's at least the best that I can, I can do and the way I can frame that with the limited feedback I have and the fact that, that I don't want to blame the learner, that there's no reason to say, oh, Saba doesn't get it, things like that. Like I need to reflect on and try to figure out how to craft and pitch better proposals. And so I, I, I never actually did better on the Saba ones. I just stopped applying after four years of trying to do that. Um, and maybe I could have got better at it. But for me, the real story in the Saba International Development Grants was that I was looking for, the, for a solution to dissemination through like the wrong channels in the Association of Behavior Analysis International. And this goes, uh, in hand with this concept of nobody owes you anything whatsoever like don't ever expect those sort of things and that's kind of what I've learned through resubmitting here but also you got to know where you're looking at and are you looking in the right places and so Association Behavior Analysis International can't be everything for everybody this is impossible you can't create an organization that is everything for everybody um, and so in hindsight, I look at these international development grants as places where they're trying to create institutions, educational opportunities, maybe different behavioral services. And that's not what I was trying to do necessarily. I was trying to create something US centric that was meant to outreach, which might not have been what people were looking for in hindsight, now that I think about it. But um, but there was, there was, the lesson for me was that there was a whole different area within the organization to be looking. And so, and I in no way fault the Association Behavior Analysis and the leadership in there for not um, selecting the proposals, what we were trying to do, of creating this online community that could help behavior analysis uh, be spread and learned online through anywhere in the world. It was particularly that we weren't looking to the right area of ABI, which this area of this organization was the dissemination of behavior analysis special interest group. Turns out they had a grant, not for the same amount of money, half as much, but they still had a grant that was specifically carved out for people who were trying to do the type of projects they were doing. So for four years, I submitted and received this letter um, 
because I was basically applying my ideas to the wrong department, <laughs> to the wrong place. Um, and so I guess two things off that. If anyone's struggling out there trying to kind of pitch their idea, like it's your craft and where you're pitching it, I think is what I've been learning as I've, I've tried to pitch different project proposals to others, to other locations. Um, I've had a really hard time pitching to larger national and international organizations, such as the Positive Behavioral Sports one, Adobe Creative Residency. I had one that I submitted to uh, some ministry um, over in the Middle East on, on trying to, to bring behavioral mental health services over there that I was encouraged to submit to that I just never heard back on either. Um, it's like, that'll happen. Keep going if you're getting them. Um, and, and look elsewhere. When I looked elsewhere, with the Saba grant, what happened was um, they gave us five hundred dollars. That was that was it. Um, it wasn't Saba; it was it was that dissemination group. They gave us five hundred dollars. That is, you know, stuff that I don't know. At the time, I could have worked and saved up over five six months pretty easily, but it was just enough to actually start up and cover our first year of expenses for a website. And the infrastructure to create a podcast. That podcast is why we do what we do. Why we do what we do is now 155-ish, maybe more, episodes published. That is unbelievable. A weekly podcast about and fueled by behavioral science that is freely available. It's 100% freely available. And would we have figured it out another way? Maybe. But was this a relief and, and a thing to kind of kick us in the in the ass to get us going? And did it help us follow through? Because we didn't want to let down the people that read our proposal said that said we would take that five hundred dollars and create a weekly podcast fueled off of behavior analysis, trying to disseminate the science. Like those things all all worked. They've worked extremely well. They've worked off of the leadership of the team. I'm gonna link them. Um, I by no means get the credit for something like that and the sustainability of it, but but three years of weekly podcast episodes came out of what could have been just perceived as a failure of trying to submit and getting denied four years in a row for um, a grant that the very same organization had a department set up for, essentially, that, that would fuel the idea that we were trying to go for. So if you're out there in behavior analysis and science communication, wherever your, your area is, however you found this video, it's 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 unclear <laughs> it's unclear especially when they don't give you feedback loops on what exactly you didn't do right or wrong um but there's i really wholeheartedly believe that there's an opportunity out there for science communication for dissemination especially of our science but of all areas of science if it's just pitched articulately enough um as well as pitched to the right people it's finding the right audience so I keep these up in my studio here as reminders daily of like, I don't know, no one owes you anything. They audience and like who you're pitching to really matters and are you thinking about that? And that there's a lot of hard work that won't pay off in the short term, but in the long term, it will lead to you being able to develop the skills to succeed and achieve what you want to achieve. Um, do I, so if I went through each of these like positive behavior support videos, I never made them for them, but I made videos about behavior analysis that are out there that are being disseminated around um, for other organizations. So in a way, did that. Do we create a residency? I don't have a full-time job where I just get to create whatever I want, but I do have loyal patrons that support over 250 people. It's freaking amazing. That take the stress off of me being able to create behavior analysis videos and sharpen my skills. That's, that's a close equivalent. And the last one, the, the group of um, the dissemination grant and just pitching it to the wrong people within that organization. It's, it's lessons learned. They just take a little while sometimes. So hope this helps somebody. If you have anything that you've been trying to do in science communication, dissemination, sharing ideas, thoughts, anything like that, um, success stories, fail stories, I'd love to hear them. If you're not already, subscribe. If you're into this sort of stuff, it's kind of a new, fresher take. Just talking aloud, I've been doing, just kind of sharing ideas out loud, seeing where they go. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Appreciate it, y'all. Peace.